ladies and welcome to my channel my name is Jessica anyway so today I wanted to give an update on my third week of recovery um I had a hysterectomy three weeks ago uh, which was May 16th um so yeah so I actually wanted to give you guys tips and um just you know kind of let you guys know how the recovery process has been so far um there is a lot of videos on youtube on hysterectomy but i feel like not many of them tell you the things that you want to really really hear um don't mind the pillow behind me i kind of got injured today which i will get into in a few minutes um and this is part of the reason why I wanted to do this video today, um, so that you guys are very cautious with your recovery. Um, I must say that for the past week and a half, I've actually began to feel normal for once. Um, the pain um, became minimal, hardly any pain. I began to feel very normal. Um, my energy started coming back in again. Uh, what can I say? Sorry, you gotta give me time because with this surgery, for some reason, uh, my memory has been off a little and I'm pretty sure that happened to a lot of people who um, has had a hysterectomy. So yeah, so I've been feeling pretty normal um, to the point where I feel like I haven't had any surgery at all because I got days where I just wake up and I feel no pain whatsoever. Like normally I would feel pain in my uh, belly button because that is the incision that has hurt me the most. Um, like I was saying, I, I had my surgery done uh, laparoscopically. Um, they did a, an incision in my belly button and then they did an incision, an incision, I oh, can't even talk. An incision. <laughs> bilateral to my belly button and one in my lower abdomen um and like i said the belly button one has always been my problem when i first got out of the hospital the pain was so severe um during my recovery time they kept shooting me up uh with all types of pain meds and nothing was taking my pain away it was so 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 painful um during nighttime i did not need morphine anymore i didn't need anything so yeah so back to the subject i've been feeling okay um you know as a woman who is always working as a woman who has three children as a woman who goes to school i am not used to sitting down and doing absolutely nothing so this whole week has been very depressing for me because i can't do shit nothing just sit down um i can't lift anything i cannot bend over um therefore i cannot clean my house um i am dying to clean this shit out of my house because you know when you have children um they throw shit all over and your husband my poor husband helps me so much he washes clothes he helps me cook He's practically doing everything and he comes so tired from work um, but men don't know how to clean the way that we do so it's appreciated but I am dying to clean um, my house like a deep deep clean uh, so yeah so um, I had days where I felt really really good where I felt like hey well I think I'm really recovering because I don't feel any pain and I would grab a broom and I start sweeping and then I'll regret it at the end of the day because I'll have to go and pop an ibuprofen because I was in pain so trust your body listen to your body your body will tell you when you need to stop um, when you feel good all of a sudden, do not, do not, I repeat, do not bend over. Do not lift your child. Do not lift anything at all, period, because you will suffer from that. Um, today, for example, um, today my daughter was on her way to school and she's like, Mom, I need my shoes. I can't find them. You know, um, my daughter's little five-year-old who's a straight-up diva, and she loves dressing up. So I got her some Michael Kors uh, boots, and she was like, Mom, I want to wear my boots today. So she couldn't find them in the closet, and I bent down without even realizing that I was doing that because I was in such a hurry to get her out the door. 
And when I bent over, I swear I have never in my entire life felt anything like that. When I bent over, I heard within my body a pop sound. And I felt it right on my belly button. I felt like everything inside my belly button was just turning. Um, it felt like, you know, when you have a long string that you're about to start sewing, like your pants or whatever, you put the needle in and you want to break the string and you pull it and it pops like it breaks. That's exactly what I felt inside. So I'm pretty sure that I had a stitch inside and it now came apart because I was bending down. So this is why I say, and I can't stress enough, to not bend over. Um, luckily, I'm okay, but I am now in a lot of pain. The doctor says if the pain gets severe, then I need to go to the ER. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, yeah. So I have a follow-up appointment uh, for next week to see my healthcare uh, physician, my primary doctor, because ever since the surgery, I've been feeling... Um, whatchamacallit, I've been feeling uh, cramping in my right calf. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm worried because um, one of the main risks of having a surgery is developing a blood clot in your leg. Um, so yeah, uh, the pain is not severe. I can go up the stairs. I don't feel any pain. When I walk, I don't feel any pain. The pain kicks in at nighttime. So I don't know if this has to do with my sciatic nerve on my back um, I really don't know what it is, but, um, this is why I'm going to see the doctor to see if this could be a possible DVT or not. Um, so yeah, so that's one thing. Um, so I suggest you walk a lot during your recovery. Um, the same day of the hospital, I was actually released the next day. I got up and I started walking the next day. I told the, the nurse, I was like, nurse, I cannot be in bed anymore. It was like 5.30 in the morning. I was like, I need you to please remove my catheter. I need to start walking. My back hurts. My legs hurt. I need to start walking. Um, they do put something on your leg, like a, like a little pump thing that keeps your circulation going so that you don't develop a blood clot. She's like, are you sure you can walk? And I'm like, I'm positive. Woman, I had three C-sections. I think I'm ready. So she took it out, my catheter, and finally I was able to walk. I got up. I don't know if it was the drugs that was helping me, but I got up and I started walking up and down the hospital like it was nothing. So then they took my, um, my, you know, that thing that they put on your door that you're at risk for falling. So they took that out and I just kept walking and walking and walking. The doctor came in around 12 and he discharged me. He's like, are you sure you want to go home today? I'm like, I'm positive. I'm going to go recover at home. I can't stand the hospital beds. So I came home in the middle of the night around 10 when I was sleeping. I would make sure I would wake up and I would start walking around my house. Um, just so that I don't develop a blood clot or anything. So maybe this isn't a blood clot, but who knows? You just want to be on the safe side. Um... So yeah, so just walk a lot. Also, you're going to be constipated. Um, it's normal. The doctors do give you a stool softener. So I suggest that you guys do take your stool softener every single day, twice a day. Um, drink lots of water. The first three to four days, it might even take you a week to poop. It took me four days. And when I went, oh my God, did I go a lot. Uh, TMI. But that's just the way it is because the anesthesia kind of makes your stool hard and all the, you know, pain medication that they give you at the hospital. So that doesn't help. But the pain of the gas, because they pump you up with that gas. And then, you know, the pain of the gas, the pain of not being able to go to the bathroom is like severe. So you want to walk around a lot. I suggest taking um, Gas X. Gas X is amazing. It helped me take all that ga gas out that I had. Um, the stool softener, I started doing it twice a day with lots of water. I did apple cider vinegar to try to help me, you know, get the flow going. Um, so, yeah, so all of that ended up working. On the fourth day, I went to the bathroom. I felt so good, but it's so painful to go to the bathroom. Uh, you're afraid of pushing because you're in so much pain. Um... And then after that, I had like a bowel movement every single day and it was normal. Uh, I did lose maybe like six pounds, I think it was. Uh, maybe it was just like a whole bunch of water weight. 
I have gained those six pounds, which I'm pretty sure is water weight because I haven't really been drinking too much water. Um, and I was able to eat normal. Um, what else? Oh, you will still feel, which I didn't had no idea about that. I thought it was going to go away, but no. Um, since I have my ovaries, uh, you still are hormonal. So I had no idea that I was still going to feel the symptoms that I used to feel before getting my period. Um, so yeah, I just recently, like a week ago, that's normally when I would normally get my period every single month because I was always on time with my period. Uh, my breast started hurting. So I, my breast, the, the, whatchamacallit, the bra, when it would rub on my breast, it would hurt so bad. So my boobs were hurting. Um, my back was hurting a little bit. Uh, what else can I say? Sorry, that's my rice maker. Um, my boobs were hurting. My back was hurting. I was having headaches. But I did notice that my back was not hurting like when I used to get my periods. It was so bad. I couldn't even walk. It would hit my hips. Um, and no cramping. You don't feel any cramping. You do crave a lot of chocolate. And you do get very hungry. So, yes, you will get the pre-menstrual symptoms that you were normally getting before. Um lubrication wise um a lot of women state not having any lubrication after a hysterectomy uh i complained to my doctor about that and he started laughing and he was like why do you want lubrication already you're not even supposed to have sex for another seven weeks and i'm like doctor i understand that but i hate not having lubrication down there it feels so damn weird like it's uncomfortable and it itches it makes your vagina itch so he says that it should resolve um, during my recovery. You know, the, the more I recover, the more lubrication I will have. And it's true because now I am beginning to have lubrication. And may I say that when he put the speculum down there, that shit hurt like fucking hell. Excuse my French, but it is so damn true. That shit hurt. I don't ever recall a speculum hurting me as much as that day. Like... I don't know if my vagina got smaller inside. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but that shit hurt. Uh, you do have stitches in there anyway, so I don't know if that had to do part of it. And ladies, I have watched so many videos on hysterectomy. Take a shower when you have surgery. Don't wait five freaking days to shower yourself. Like, I understand you're pained. I understand that you're tired. I understand you're weak. Go to the bathroom, put a chair inside the shower, and shower. Because hygiene is very important during surgery and your recovery. Because if you don't shower and you don't wash yourself down there, what's going to happen is you're going to develop the severe infection. You could develop an infection in your wound. You could develop an infection in your vagina. Like You could get... Um, bacterial vaginosis down there because you're not washing yourself right and you do have stitches inside so that's going to cause some, like a nasty ass smell down there so i cannot stress enough shower when i got out the hospital the first thing i told my doctor was can i shower as soon as i get home because i was dying to shower the doctor said yeah you can definitely shower just let the water run on your incision but don't touch it and don't put soap on it that's all he said and when you get out the shower, pat it dry. And that's exactly what I did. And I showered every, sometimes I would even shower twice. Because after the surgery, I did notice that you sweat a lot in the middle of the night, which is normal. It's your hormones trying to get back to normal. Um, so yeah, so shower. And if you're not going to shower, <laughs> at least uh, wash yourself down there. Grab water and soap because baby wipes is not enough. You need to really wash down there with water and soap. We pee all day, ladies. So it's important that you keep yourself clean, um, especially around the incision with the stomach. Uh, I would actually also suggest wearing binders um, or, you know, the body shapers, whatever. Uh, they say you really don't need it when you have a laparoscopic surgery. But for me, it helped me tremendously getting out of bed. It helped me walking. It gave me a lot of support. Um, I guess the pressure on the belly really helped me a lot. So I would suggest getting a binder. Um, at the hospital, the nurses would be like, oh, you don't need it. 
but I made sure that I requested it. Um, it also helped me at nighttime. I would sleep with it, so it would help with my back pain. Um, what else can I tell you guys? Um, yeah, normally you cannot work for eight weeks. I cannot return back to work until July uh, 22nd. Um, like I said, it depends on what kind of job you do. For me, I work in the medical field. I deal a lot with patients and, you know, I work in immediate care. So I have patients who come in who need um, immediate attention and sometimes you have to lift them or people with fractures. So I just, I can't go back to work yet. Um, so if you're like a person who works at a desk or something, maybe you can go back to work at six or five weeks. But in my case, it was different. Um, what else? And yeah that's about it ladies that's all i have for now i mean if you have any questions feel free to leave me questions um on the comments below and i'll be glad to answer everything you want to know um also i do suggest since you cannot bend i suggest you go to walmart and that you pick up one of these okay these are it's a stick and this helps you pick up everything from the floor so it has like a little, um, let me see, it has like one of these, and then you just pick up stuff from the floor. And this right here has been my best friend. I only pay like $20 at Walmart for this. So it has really helped me pick up the mess that my beautiful children leave me every single day in the living room. Um, it's been very helpful. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful for everyone going through this. I wish you nothing but the best. If you are deciding on getting the surgery, just know that it would be the best decision of your life. If you are someone who struggled like me with menstrual cycles, someone who um, suffered with becoming anemic, uh, someone who suffered from severe cramps that you couldn't walk, you couldn't breathe, uh, severe um, back pains. Um, I know it's tough. I lived with this for so many years um, and it's not an easy thing. And if you have not had children and this is your only way out, just always remember there's always a way to have a baby. You can always adopt. You can always do a lot of things. You know what I mean? Um, surrogate it's not the end of the world you could still have a family but just think about yourself and think about your health and um think about your future because to live like this it's it's not a life um so yeah so for those of you who have not subscribed to my channel go ahead and subscribe hit the bell button on the right um to see updates on my videos and I think I should be able to post more videos since I'm actually at home doing nothing with myself. And yeah, so subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Love you guys.